It's Friday, which means it's time for another Friday classic hymn. And I don't know if there's ever been a song that so summarizes committing yourself to God as this wonderful hymn. Rarely, if ever, has such a passionate song about committing to God been written or been sung. And I have to wonder to myself if we who sung this song really meant it every time we sung it, the world would change. This is Take My Life and Let It Be. Do you have a memory of this song? Do you remember the first time you sang it? Perhaps I'd love for you to share that in the comments below. But let's get into the history behind the song now. The song was written by Frances Havergill. She was the daughter of an Anglican minister and musician. And from a young age, she seemed to have a knack for writing poetry. She had a real gift for putting words together in a special way. She was also a very good musician, as was her father. And she wrote a lot of books, very influential books, that have become classics in Christian writing. Now, one day she went to a local care facility called Airly House. She spent some time with the people there, and an amazing thing happened. Here's how she wrote about it. I went for a little visit of five days. There were ten persons in the house, some unconverted and long prayed for, some converted, but not rejoicing Christians. He gave me the prayer, Lord, give me all in this house. And he just did. Before I left the house, everyone had got a blessing. The last night of my visit, after I'd retired, the governess asked me to go to the two daughters. They were crying, etc. Then and there, both of them trusted and rejoiced. It was nearly midnight, and I was too happy to sleep and passed most of the night in praise and renewal of my own consecration. That's an important line. Renewal of my own consecration. And these little couplets formed themselves and chimed in my heart one after another until they finished with ever only all for thee, the words of that hymn. She took these words very seriously all her life. She really meant these words when she wrote them and you could see it in her life. She wrote these words to a friend of hers about one of the lines in the song. The Lord has shown me another little step and of course I've taken it with extreme delight. Take my silver and my gold, one of the lines from the hymn, now means shipping off all my ornaments, including a jewel cabinet, which is really fit for a countess, to the church missionary house, where they will be accepted and disposed of for me. I retain only a brooch or two for daily wear, which are memorials of my dear parents, and also a locket with the only portrait I have of my niece in heaven, my Evelyn, and her two rings mentioned in Under the Surface, one of the books she wrote. But these I redeem, so that the whole value goes to the Church Missionary Society. I had no idea I had such a jeweler's shop. Nearly 50 articles are being packed off. I don't think I need to tell you, I never packed a box with such pleasure. Her life really matched the words of the song. In fact, because of this hymn, she became known as the Consecration Poet. Her life was so so truly consecrated to God that people saw in her Jesus and everything she did. Now it is said that her and Fanny Crosby, one of the other great hymn writers of the day, though they never met, were great admirers of one another. And in fact, many people were admirers of Havergal because of her, her truly consecrated life. Her father wrote a tune to this hymn, and her great desire was that when she died, the song would keep being published with the tune that her father had written. But sadly, that wasn't to be. The tune that was written and that we sing it to and that became very popular was actually written by a minister, a Swiss minister, named Caesar Milan. And that's the one that everybody knows. And so unfortunately, that wish of hers didn't come true, but her song is still very popular and very well loved today. Now at the age of 42, Havergal was told that she didn't have much longer to live. Her health had failed for a little while and at this point there was nothing more anyone could do for her. And her reply to hearing those words was this, if I am really going, it is too good to be true. Too good to be true that I'm finally going to meet my savior. What wonderful words to end your life with what faith and what a life of consecration 
she truly lived. So let's look at the words of this beautiful song she wrote. Verse 1 says this, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Man, I love this because this is full consecration. Take all my life, she says, all my moments, all my days. Let everything about me be one continuous stream of praise to God. Isn't that what the Christian life should look like? To consecrate, by the way, means to devote or dedicate something to God. And so to say, let my life be consecrated, it means let it be dedicated and devoted to God entirely. Whenever we have the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, we consecrate the bread and wine. And that is to dedicate them to God and to take something which is ordinary and devote it to God so that it becomes something extraordinary. And that's what we do when we consecrate our lives to God. We ask Him to come and touch our lives that they become extraordinary for Him. Is your life a consecrated life dedicated to God so that His glory shines forth in everything you do? Verse 2 says this, Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee my hands and my feet she says let let them move in rhythm with his love and only go where he wants them to go isn't this a lovely verse have you ever consecrated your hands and your feet to god's glory i went on a men's camp last year and i remember we the team met the, the day before and we had a service the night before and just consecrated ourselves and got ready for the weekend that was going to take place and one of the amazing things we did in that service was we washed each other's hands. And that was actually a very powerful moment, being able to, as brothers in Christ, consecrate each other to God like that. I remember that vividly, and it was a moment of saying, Lord, whatever these hands do this weekend, let them honor you, let them glorify you, and let them, let them do your work. Have you ever consecrated your hands and feet to God? Verse 3 goes like this, Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. So notice this, she offers her hands and feet first. It's as if she's saying, If I can do your work and your will with my hands and my feet without saying a word, I will do that. Let my life, let my life honor you, Lord, first, before my words. But then she says, Yes, Take my mouth and my lips and my tongue and let my words always honor you. Do you need to consecrate your lips to God today? Do you need to dedicate them to Him? Is it time to, to quit saying some of the words you say? Is it time to quit speaking the way you do to certain people or of certain situations? Jesus once said that we will all have to account for every empty word we speak about that? Are you watching your words because they are precious and they must be used to build up rather than break down? Maybe today you need to sing this line and this verse and consecrate your mouth to God so that it speaks blessings and honors Him in everything you do. Okay, verse 4 goes like this. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. I love this. Not a might shall I withhold. Not the tiniest bit will I withhold from God. All I have is yours, Lord. Can you say that today? That all you have is God's. And it's often been said that the last part of a person to be converted is their wallet. We find it very hard to dedicate all of our money to God. Not just the tithe which goes to the church, but all of your money is God's. Can you give it all to God? It doesn't mean you give it all away. You use some to care for yourself and your family, but you use everything you have. You see it as a blessing from God and as, as if you're a steward, which you are. You're a steward of the gifts that he's given you. If you say that, you can say, Lord, take my silver and my gold. Take whatever I have and use it for your glory. And how about your intellect, as the second part of this verse says? Can you give your intellect, your mind to God and say, Lord, use my mind only for good? What are you using your mind 
for? What are you filling your mind with? Is it consecrated so that it is primarily receiving the things of God and only actually receiving the things of God? Or are you filling your mind up with other things? Consecrate your mind so that it is God's glory that fills it at all times. And you know what? Then your intellect will be used for good things. It will be used for, for great things in this world if you consecrate it to God's work. Verse 5 starts going even deeper. She says, Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. I love this. Take my will. Let my will align with yours. Do you remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane saying, Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Isn't that our prayer as well? Take my will. Let my will be aligned to your will. And what about your heart? As she says here, Take my heart. It is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Who is on the throne of your heart? Is it you? Are you number one in your life? Do you do everything seeing how it benefits you? Or is Jesus on the throne of your heart? And everything you do is for his glory and to give him praise and to show him to the world. That's consecration right there. And then verse 6, the last verse says, Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. She gets to the crux of it here at the end. Take my love, my love. Be the one that I love the most, Lord. More than anything, be my deepest joy, my deepest delight. Let it, let it always be you, you, you who is first and most wonderful in my life. And I like this picture of her pouring her treasures at God's feet and saying, whatever I treasure, Lord, let it all be second to you. And let, let you be my greatest treasure in this life. That is the Christian life. And then lastly, she says, take myself. Take myself, take everything in other words. And I want all of my life to ever only be for you. Wow, what, what dedication. What a song. You know, you cannot actually sing words like this lightly. These are words that if we really mean them, our lives will change. If we truly consecrate ourselves to God like this, our lives will change. And they will really be amazing God-honoring lives. There are people who have lived their lives like this, as she clearly did. I pray that you and I will be like that, that we'll be like Francis Havergal, who lived a truly consecrated life and gave her all to God. Sing with me now. And if you mean it, sing along. And may this be a great moment of consecrating our lives to God and starting anew as we honor Him in all we do. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in endless praise, let them flow in endless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee swift and beautiful for thee take my voice and let me sing Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee, filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a Take my intellect and use every power as 
Take my 